Elon Musk says, if you can't tell it, you can't sell it. My partner Arit says, if you can't tell it, you can't create it. Hi, the product story is something that really, really helps us create products. We use it for most of the products we do, and we use a workshop to create it, which is a way that is painless to create and helps us align everybody around that story. In the workshop I'm going to show you today, I'm going to show you how we create the brand properties, which are a set of words that identify the product story, how you can create the differentiation statement, which is the product story, what we're telling about our, our product that makes it unique and make it very valuable for our users and the brand building blocks, the mission, the positioning, and the vision behind our product. So all of these are outcomes of our workshop and I've put a Miro a file so everybody can try it on their own. I'll put a link in the, in the comments below so you can download our Miro file and just use it for running that kind of a workshop. If you don't know Miro, there are many tutorials that show you how to work it. It's a great tool and we use it all the time for collaborative remote work or sometimes just for arranging our thoughts. Okay, so just a small outline about what is the value? Why do we need a product story? So A, we need it to communicate what we're doing across the organization, across our teams. We want everybody to relate to what we're doing. And if we just tell them it without putting in a context that has some spirit into it, it's not very communicative. So we want to align everybody behind a story that we're gonna tell through our product. The second thing we need is to have some kind of a tool that will enable us to prioritize what we're creating. So if something supports our story, then it should be set on a higher priority. And if something is a sidekick, is, is a side plot in our story, then we may be able to not prioritize it as the high priority items. And last but not least, we want some kind of a personality behind our product. We want people to be able to taste it, to feel it, to relate emotionally to what we're doing. And product stories are really, really instrumental about it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how the entire thing is built. Okay, so there are a few steps in this workshop. And the first step is the SWOT. SWOT is a really standard tool for creating some kind of understanding about the market and where we are as a company or as a product with relation to that market. In this exercise, we use the SWOT not for marketing analysis. It's very, very efficient as a marketing analysis tool, but this is not what we're looking for. What we do is to collect words that will help us down the line that are from the business context. And SWOT is just a way to create conversation around that, which is not too aware. And that's a good tool. So we sit together and usually I'll have somebody from marketing and I'll have somebody from customer care and I have somebody from dev and somebody from product. So I'll get a bunch of key stakeholders for this product put them in a room and do a workshop. And I'll ask, okay, everybody, let's fill in the SWOT. So what are our strengths? Strengths and weaknesses are properties of us. They are centered about our company or our product. So how do we describe our strength and our weaknesses? Things that depends on us, that we can change or improve. So we start putting these in words. Now, don't uh, censor anything. Just let people throw words and just document everything because it will be used down the line. You don't need to negotiate each and every item. Just let's write down our strength. 
And then let's write down our weaknesses. Threats and opportunities are things that are in the market, how the market affects us. What are the opportunities in the market, how we can approach it, and the threats, what our competitors are doing, or are there any technological changes that we need to be aware of, or new business models. So we fill this out again, we just need the words, okay? And after we do that, we move to the next step. In the next step, we have this list of contradictions, of characteristics that contradict each other. So you'll have traditional and modern, pragmatic and visionary, intellectual or emotional. And what we'll do is we'll go one by one and ask our team, are we more to that side or to the other side? So we will move the dial up and down to, to create this kind of sliding representation of our characteristic. What that gives us is a list of words that are not necessarily coming from our content world, which helps us get some spirit into the brand story. After we do that, we just look at the most extreme values on these grades. We don't take items that were in the middle or somewhere towards side, just those that we were really, really sure that are one of our traits, that we can say we're integrated, we're durable, we're open, okay? And we copy these and we put them into a board of characteristics. So we have these words. Remember, we have the words from the SWOT. We have the words from the characteristics. And now we talk about values. So we etch ask each participant to write as many values that we want to have in our brand or in our product. Things that we believe should be put into our product to emphasize what we're doing. Things like transparency and clarity and knowledge. We want to emphasize these values. Now we let each of the participant to write as many of they uh, want, but we ask them to select the three top values that they have and put them on the board. Again, I'm not qualifying, I'm not arguing, I'm just putting these words. I'm trusting the team to come up with words. So now we have values and the next step, I'm going to collect all of the words we had in the SWOT, in the characteristics and in the values into one really neat board of words, something like that. Okay, and now there are two options. I prefer to stop the workshop at this point and go home and give everybody some time to digest what we've been through. The entire th session can be an hour and a half so far. But now I want everything to sink down. I don't want you to over-rationalize things because what we need is to forget about where these words coming. We want to detach them from the context. And I'm coming after a few days. Sometimes I do it alone. Sometimes I do it with one team member. Sometimes we collect the entire team and we do it together. But the idea is to start and group words according to how we feel about them that give us similar feelings. Don't try to analyze this and put this into categories like this is our market and this is for the user. Don't do that. Talk about emotion and try to say like, so for me, dynamic and innovation, they work together. They have like the same feel for it. And pragmatic and clarity and analytics, they also go together. So here we grouped words and here we grouped words and here we grouped words. And generally you should have around five to six groups, not more. The, as little as you can group them, if you have like three or four words, it's even better because you are more condensed. A story as condensed as you can be, that's great. Now I'm gonna take all these words into the categories right up here and I'm gonna put them into the columns like these and I'm gonna name the columns okay so for all of these bald innovative leadership disruptive dynamic I gave the word of innovative and expensive luxuries I put high-end you need to, to spend some time just giving good titles 
that reflect the feeling you have here. What does that mean? So for me, secure and durable and transparency and open dialogable are partners. Okay, that's for me. And so we agree on these. So we have five or six. These are the brand properties. These are the source, the heart of our brand. This is what we communicate as the heart of our brand. And what I do is I put all of the brand properties into one storyboard and I start to play around with that. I try to create sentences that make sense using these words. I can change them a bit. I can use connection words and that's okay. So I'll give you an example. Let's just look at that uh, fun problem solver or high-end partner or innovative problem solver. It's fun to solve problems with high-end partners, okay? And so eventually I'm gonna have something that looks like this. Problem solving can be fun with a high-end innovative partner, which is a story, okay? So this gets you through a message of what we're doing. This is, our product is consulting, right? We solve problems. So this is our story. Problem solving can be fun with a high-end innovative partner. We are the solution for solving your problem and making it fun as you go. So that, that can be our story, okay? So that's the outcome and that's the story of the product. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these words again and I'm gonna build the three building blocks of the brand, the mission, the positioning, and the vision. So mission is about what we do. We solve problems for high-end partners with fun and innovative processes and designs. So I've used the word, you see that I balded the words that are the brand properties to create a sentence that describes what we do. I did the same for positioning, which how we are perceived. Fun and innovative problem solvers, great. And for the vision, we are going to be an innovative agency solving problem for high-end partners around the world. So I was able to use these words naturally in the building block statements. And this is a good validation that these words actually make sense and they are good to use. And now I can make decisions about priorities based on, is this product innovative? Is this product I can sell as a high-end product? Why aren't we, uh, I can't give a low-end solution, right? If my story is to be a high-end partner, right? And our contracts needs to reflect partnership. So all of these, the, the brand properties, creating the building blocks are good validation that I did a good job. But after I do that, that's not enough for me. I go back to the team that collected the word and I go through this presentation and I reflect on it and I get feedback. Now 90% of the uh, cases, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. And then Sometimes they will modify one or two of these just to fine tune it and then we're done. And we can communicate it across the, the developing team and to the marketing people. Now, one thing I want to emphasize is that this brand story, this is not the tagline. Now, people often confuse about it because the tagline can be something totally different for us, for example, is good ideas deserve to see daylight, okay? Which is an underlying reflection of the product story. The problem solving can be fun with a high-end innovative partner. But it's not that because you can't use that. That's not short enough to be a tagline. But it's a good story I can easily communicate and take decisions based on. So that's about it. It's a short workshop. It's actually two workshops. And one is the collection and then the assortment of the words. And then you have another meeting for summarizing. That's the structure. It's usually really fun and effective. And I wish you try it and tell me all about it. Tell me more if you are doing it, if you're using product stories in your products. 
If you like this, then please subscribe to our channel and get more UX product innovation design sprint updates every week. See you next week. Bye-bye.